Hello everyone, I just I want to tell you about an interesting project that I am working on. It's coming along pretty well. And you can see on my screen I've got some Python code and these classes inherit from the circuit class. So maybe you can see where I'm going with this. And we have a not, an and, a XOR, or exclusive or, a nor, and that's just what I've needed so far to do the rest. Um, and so this is actually the beginnings of a, a, a pure Python logic circuit simulator. And what I found very interesting is that once I started building these uh, basic building block gates, I was able to start creating more complex systems. For example, here's an SR latch, which in my notebook looks a bit like this where you've got the output feeding to the input and that's exactly what I have in the code and so I just built it the way that it is done on uh, drawing and the computer model is I don't know competent enough that it when I ran in the tests it actually works as an SR latch in the same way that the real world one does and so I moved to a gated SR latch and that worked too a D-type latch and that also is functioning right now. I started working on a D-type flip-flop that um, changes on the rising edge and then we also have one for the falling edge, right? And so once you have flip-flops, now you can start building counters because flip-flops I guess this one's probably done with JK, um, but you could do it with, I don't know, maybe this one is using D-type latches. So let's check that out. Here's my, I made, I made a toggle flop, which is not how I learned it. Um, that's probably not the r real name, but I think that describes it well. It's a flip-flop in toggle mode. And this is the first time when I actually had to come up with a creative solution to solve a, a problem. See, uh, a t in the toggle mode, it relies the circuit relies on the fact that the fact that it takes just a few nanoseconds for the gates to change state, and it sort of exploits that so that it, the circuit can just only capture a rising edge or a falling edge and ignore everything else. Well, in Python, you know, we don't have this sort of transition, um, so you know, 10, mil 10 nanosecond delay or whatever. And so I actually had to um, force the two flip-flops into the state that I needed them, or that is, really have good control of where, the, you know, kind of um, gate the data, because I had an issue where both flip-flops were... Um, enabled at the same time and it was creating a recursion, uh, recursion, infinite recursion and that's not okay. So I tried a bunch of different solutions like one, one solution was to instead of driving the data on the first uh, latch with the Q naught complementary output directly, I put an AND gate that was then also tied into the state of whether or not the first one's enabled. And that actually made a little bit, I think that worked for the first clock cycle and then after that it didn't work. And I ended up discovering that if you use a D-type latch to gate the, uh, the Q knot into your data, your D, uh, and you drive the enable of the D-type latch with the master latch's enable pin and invert it that this actually solves the problem. And this is very interesting. So let me go to my place where I test the up counter and we can actually watch the up counter count. And I'm, let's see, test counter. So I'm gonna throw an assert false in here so that it will force the test to show out but right now it just passes and says everything's fine and doesn't print anything on the screen so let's run the test it looks like it failed but let's take a look 
that actually gave us exactly what we wanted. And you know what, maybe if I tell it to return the number, it will be quicker than reading. Oh, that's beautiful. So you can see we start at zeros and we actually go to one. This looks like it is eight because the bits are reversed. I put the least significant bit over here at the index zero. Uh, but then actually you have zero, one, two, three, uh, just three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this thing just counted from zero to ten simply by, um, you know, ten times clocking the uh, or pulsing the clock. And I think that's amazing because I didn't really program any of that functionality. I just built the circuits according to how they are in my notebook and in the real world. And this is working. So I'm excited to see what direction I can go. Uh, with this simulator. So far, I've learned that there are a few situations where I will have to come up with creative solutions like my D-type latch on the um, toggle mode flip-flop. But, you know, in theory, I should be able to create all the building blocks necessary to, you know, implement a basic microprocessor of sorts or, or some other more, more complex system. And the neat thing about this is that since it's implemented you know, down to the bare bone gates, every single wire, I mean, I actually have a, I have a wire class. Uh, so every single wire in whatever circuit I build can be fully exposable and debuggable. And, you know, you can attach LEDs to whatever wires you want and monitor their, their uh, state. So I'm very excited about this. If you were to build a microprocessor in it and you know, try to run assembly code on it. It's nowhere near there now, but if you did, you would have an incredible amount of debug power, um, being able to see what's going on. And, you know, maybe I'll come up with some good use cases when I get there, but right now I'm just very excited that this model works so well. So thank you for watching. I hope that it was, you know, easy to see, you know, some of what this is capable of doing or what I'm, or easy to see also my approach to this, um, this simulator. It's not at the moment on GitHub or anything like that, but it could be. So just let me know what you think and thank you for watching.